Good morning to everybody. Okay, indeed a great pleasure. And then I have to talk uh, like that. One. Okay, doesn't matter. Okay, okay. So good morning to all of you. Uh, I welcome you all. Uh, all the, I think all the postgraduates. Is there anybody other than postgraduates or other than any faculty members? Or, okay, I welcome you all. Full post graduates, very good, okay. So, see, everybody has to know, doubt, what is ASCII examinations, okay. Why should I, what, how you to prepare? See, this is a, always, now it is very challenging for the people, actually, there's no, uh, for everybody. How to prepare for ASCII? See, is it preparation need separately or I can do, we can do uh, that no, for, for the theoretical examination. You see, nothing but is objective. So, whatever you are on, uh, objective, structured clinical examination. Okay. So, what will you expect? So, this examiner and the student, both are will be same language. Okay. So, it should be you no know, same thing. There will not be deviation from, see, because it's the, our answer key. There is a question says, you no, know, we have to set the answer key. The answer key and your answer has to match. If you are not matching, you will not offer the marks. That is that is the main thing. So, how do you make it at least? How do we, I think differently, you think differently. Correct. Okay. But that is the reason we want actually that the same language should be done. Okay. The same, same language, how do you put actually this one? It has to be, you know, it is structured by the... Um, our articles and everything, okay, what do you expect? So, this is the main thing, main uh, background. So, okay, how do you prepare ASCII? See, ASCII is nothing but, it is a clinical examination. So, what is the, develop the clinical skill? The clinical skill, how do you develop? The, you are daily, you are doing the patients. Daily, you are doing the studies under them. So, if you are daily involved the process of the acquisition of the image, or maybe doing the process of the, that particular techniques and whether ultrasound or CT or maybe an MRI or maybe intervention or anything. This is related to what you are doing in the particular clinical scenario. Okay, patient comes with a particular problem, whether you have to address those issues, that is more important. For how do you, you your study has to be tailor made according to a, the, the clinical scenario. That is what say. Here this, they are not going to ask a theoretical questions. Please understand, there will not be theoretical questions. Because already theory you passed. You already theory passed. What is important no, you should know, how your daily is working. Because what a you know, patient comes with some problem. That clinical problem, how do you address? Okay, so what the technique has to be important? What sequence is important? How do you proceed? So you have to be on the line, should be in that one. It's not leave it to the you know, technicians. If you do technicians, you should oversee. Each and every sequence you have to oversee. Okay. If you are not oversee, that's all. You have missed the finding or you may miss the a technical aspect. We are not, suppose patient have a trigeminal neuralgia. Unless you take a particular level of you no, know, a tailor made the sequence for high resolution of the trigeminal nerve. Definitely this is going to be you know misdeletion of a trigeminal ganglia and a short mass or maybe neurovascular conflict. So like that, it is tailor made according to the particular. So same thing only we are going to ask questions. So it may be a techniques or maybe related to a morphological idiopathogenesis or maybe a related to a, uh, maybe a complication of disease process or maybe a key finding, very important key finding which is both are maybe think the examiner and as well as question the, uh, the um, the student has to think simultaneously together. That means it's a key finding. It has to, to differentiate. Okay. So with this, I'll show some example quickly, and uh, we'll proceed for the um, each and every case. So, okay. Uh, I got it there. Okay. Right, very. For example, see this is a case one. An infant present with a nasal obstruction. A small child. Okay. Um, so, there is a, something I have marked specifically because no, it is no time ugly. Because no, um, so you see the, what is the mark ugly? With the mark, so you can make it that one varicell uh, areas. So, this abnormality you have to identify it. 
Okay, the questions will be like that. Now, what is the large arrows pointed out? What large areas? Okay, the areas of the large areas pointed out. What is the lesion? What is the areas? Okay, then we cannot make a diagnosis only one arrow alone. Okay, so you have to see that something. You now go back that now see that com a constellation of findings. Okay, there is something here and something here and something here. Okay, so. What something lesion obliterating, obstructing that nasal airway pathway? Okay. So what do you think? This is a see. It is a maybe imaging, maybe in the line of the pathological process. Okay. Or maybe the location give a clue. The extent of the disease process give a clue. Or maybe a characteristic signal alteration, a signal, or maybe density, or maybe whether okay the, that no echo, hyper echo, okay, that give a clue. So three things only in that mantra of radiology. Number one, location, location, location. Number two, there is extent. Third things, what is the the density or pattern, and the clinical pattern density. So that is the clue. So now the question is see that no carefully see the large area person. What there is question have the mark. Okay, maybe one mark or two mark. That depends on they, they will not they will project you. So what is the diagnosis based on the what are the component of the disease? Here the three component. Okay, so look at this one. This is a triad of finding. Okay, what is the triad of finding? So you can see that medial canthus mass represents the enlarged lacrimal sac. That we see that you know, the lacrimal sac. That okay, lacrimal sac is enlarged. Okay, lacrimal nasal lacrimal duct also dilated. Okay, so enlarged but nasal lacrimal duct also enlarged with or she is lacrimal canal secondary to enlarged soft tissue component of the nasal. So there is intranasal mass with you know, they are representing that is you know. You can see the intranasal mass. You can see here nasal mass. You can see that no, it is nothing but a mucosal. So what is co combination all? So combination will be nasal lacrimal duct mucosal. Simple things. Okay. So once you know that the component of it, you have to see the component. The component may be same for you and me. Okay, that's not that going to change like that. So case number two. So 45 years old with the left mandibular lesion. They said uh, left mandibular lesion. What is the lesion? So what is the cause? What is the diagnosis? And what is the what is the additional step? Everything you have to be you have to familiarize because you have to be in the three years period you would have seen. Okay, so this is patient having suppose think you know there is obviously there is some abnormal there is some mass forming lesion areas there. It is not seen. It is asymmetrical. Okay, but unless you are familiar with that, you no, know, you can see suppose a patient having a um, oropharyngeal or nasopharyngeal area, you should not be taken something. You know maybe this mass may be a nodal. Okay. But what is the lesion? Oh. So you have to familiar with certain things. That's what familiarity is important and awareness. So look at this area. This summit will again nicely seen, and there is a mass seen like a mass forming lesion area, cell the area. But important thing, there is something you know that defect. There is some defect in the that myelo head. Okay. So you have to familiar with the, where is the myelo head. So look at the myelo head, and the myelo head having some there's no. Different uh, bellies. Within that different belly, there is a the sublingual gland projecting it into that areas. Okay, this call. Okay, so look at this areas. Nicely, this you no, know, it is coming coming out between the belly of the myelohyoid. So it is a myelohyoid bout near uh, deformity. Is a focal discanty of the myelohyoid muscle, forming a permit sublingual salivary gland. So it is a normal variation. Should not mistake any a mass lesion. So it can be a salivary gland, or maybe fat, or maybe vessel. The combination, okay. So you have to familiar with. What is the next step? There is no additional workup. Yeah, this is a normal variation. Okay. If the known case of, if if there is a known case of a tumor or something, you know, maybe fullness, you should not mistake this is an abnormal node or anything. You should not take biopsy. That is the way. So. You should be a safe radiology for the community. That is what we are expecting. Okay, you have to be familiar with the normal, normal variation, and because we are doing the study, you cannot do the job. Okay, whether this is CMV or not, that is more important. Okay, this is a way to be. Um, okay, so my, you have to be familiar with myla at about net deformity. That you can go and the net you can see that the, the two halves will be there. You can get bilateral, maybe sometimes symmetrical. Okay. So the centrally and the the median raphe will be you not know, defective. The median raphe will be defective. Okay. Uh, the reason cross section image is proven actually there is no discontinuity of the myeloid muscles allowing only normal structure of the sublingual space. That's why no we are not seeing any abnormal structures. Okay. So it is a myeloid bout that deformity causing a normal variation producing a mass lesion. Okay. 
So, case number three. Purkadi, uh, just mention about no, whenever, please stop that 9 o'clock. Okay, I don't want to carry the next one. Okay, 9 o'clock, ask me to stop. Okay. Okay, this case number three, they name the investigations. So, you have to familiar with the investigation because you are doing. Okay, what is investigation? Come on. Just something is there, obviously. So, I have done uh, deliberately that the different density. Something, you know, it is not normal. Something in a irregular pathway, no? So, what is, diagnose, what is the what is the technique? What is the investigation? What is the investigation? Abna, come on. Inna sa tondro Okay, come on. Yes, exactly. This is CT xenogram. Okay, that is fistulogram. Okay, fistulogram. Something additional contrast. Identity contrast. Why they have given that? Why does the need? Where is the location? What is the extent? That give a mark. Okay. So, it can be, you know, what is the diagnosis? So, diagnosis will be, you know, thyroglossal cystaxis, okay, classical. Because he is going to the visceral compartment, visceral space. You no, know, all of you familiar with the visceral compartment, he is going to the visceral compartment, classical location, midline and defect, that through the defect, the contrast going into this area, okay. So, it is a thyroglossal cyst. So, thyroglossal cyst can occur anyway, it be midline or slightly off the mid midline because the project is sometimes that along the pathway, the thyroglossal that, that you are familiar with. See, if you, if you want, you can see this image, okay, foramen cecum to thyroglossus. It can be a cyst, it can be a fistula or maybe complicated uh, in any format. So, you may get different type of cases, okay. So, uh, if the same case, don't worry, this is not the same case, definitely, I am telling you, you know, this case is not going to be shown to your exam, <laughs> okay. Even though I am <laughs> setting the questions, I will not do setting the case, okay. Don't take that photography, not waste, waste for you. This definitely we will not get the exam. <laughs> I'm okay. So, what is case number four? So, what is the study? What is the study? You have to be familiar with these this studies. Okay. What is the technique? They give the mark. Because study you are to be familiar with, you know. If you are not familiar, who will be familiar? Because this is a this is a domain of ours, radiologists. Okay. So, what is the study? Come on. Come on, tell me. A simple man. CT. Ultrasound? MRI. MRI of what? MRI of? MRI brachial flexus will not give mark, full mark. M something is there, no? More specific. See, understand. Okay. So, MR neurograph. Very good. MR neurograph of the brachial plexus. That is the correct terminology you will use. If you are putting MR um, brachial flexus, they, they will not give mark. Because you are respecting your neurography. Then what next one is what is the technique? What is the technique? So it is a so you should not use the terminology which are in the um, that machine oriented, right? Like you know, you do coronal 3D T2 at an image with the fat suppression, T2 fat suppression image, still sequences. So there is something this called phase or something. So people do differently use different company has different use. So MR neurography or the brittle flexes, okay. So, what is abnormalities? You can see that what is the diagnosis given, okay. That will be clue will be other things, okay. You can see that now, see look at the root trunk division or cord is normal here. But here, there is something, you know, abutting, there is something, you know, the lower trunk, lower, the, you know, division also, it is stuck to it. There's something, you know, it is angle. Why the angle? See the look at the areas, okay. What is the areas? There is a abnormally, there is a rib is there. What is the rib? Cervical rib. The cervical drip causing that known traction. That is attracting the, the exactly areas where the break is. So, so the question you have to answer that three things without your familiar with. What is the study? MR neurograph, your brachial plexus. Technique will be 3D due to fat suppression. What is the diagnosis? That will be you know, projected. Okay. So, you have to, everything will be within that three minutes or four minutes. Okay. That is what. So, unless you have familiar with, familiarity of the image, you cannot make answer the question. Okay. Good. So, so, thoracic outlet syndrome, okay, because it can be compressed to the nerve or maybe a vessel or maybe, or maybe uh, the plexus itself, okay. So, 11 years uh, old boy having that known, uh, there is a CT, okay, the CT high resolution, okay, all of you familiar with it. So, don't bother about the dieting this, see, please understand, you get familiarity, this is the example only. So, this question will not occur, don't worry, okay. So, what is the main presentation of symptoms here? This is obviously this, what is the main symptom? Because you have to familiarize. 
and otherwise they may be present with something okay but we based on the imaging what could be the presentation you have to be like that is the clinical neurology clinical radiology okay so so what do you think actually obviously something abnormal here what abnormal so what the abnormal here what is abnormal here both sides something is there obviously what common site involvement what is the diagnosis what is the diagnosis yes come on bilateral is it projecting very well uh, sorry sensor neuron loss okay this is a bilateral labyrinthine ossifications okay it is uh, otherwise known as clearly there is no labyrinthine ossification here this is a pathological process the membranous labyrinth will be obliteration okay so there is a obliteration of the exactly there no obliteration of the cochlear the basal turn of the cochlear uh, uh, obliteration that is the main site so there will be common this is a occurred sensor neuron hearing loss in a younger patient usually common in younger patients it is appear because it is a membranous the labyrinth will be obliterated by the sclerosis okay the ossification so the the scale of tympani of the basal turn of the cochlear is the most commonly affected site it is not vincent vanity of myself it is a it is an entity okay it will be first presentation will be like that only okay so the basal turn of cochlear will be most that is the answer should be there so here the high density bone deposition within the membranous bone you can see that you can appreciate the no, high density the cochlear turn is not clearly seen at all okay the basal turn is very with obliteration okay bilaterally so typically of bilateral labyrinthine ossification okay again 42 years female patient having that no this is a common condition okay so what is the case yes, come on quickly say because time is up yes 42 years female what is the diagnosis because the constellation of finding yes exactly synothrombosis what is the cause for synothrombosis mastitis is it only mastitis something is there come on correct mastitis or something most more than mastitis what is there correct this is cholesteatoma because you can see the cholesteatoma here and the cholesteatoma with there is no chronic inflammatory process because diffusion restriction also is there okay so that causing see what is type of you have to say the clinician it is not sinus thrombosis alone this is correct this is a empyema empyema this is important you have to take immediate tackle the tone on so your value is important if you are putting sinus thrombosis you will get mark half mark only so here this is a lateral sinus thrombosis second to a autogenic autogenic infection causing a serious clinical threat okay so why is important intracranial complication like you know cholesterol occur very important thing this is a thrombophlebitis occurs okay there is a empyema epidural empyema epidural empyema and as well as you look at the epidural empyema with there is a thrombophlebitis second to because there is chronic thrombosis it has to be drained immediately otherwise the patient will go for sepsis so this severity i'll expect if you yes you want a safe radiology to the community if you are not missing that no thrombus you know instead of epyema you are telling thrombosis they will not satisfied clinician not satisfied clinician will be no will think of differently so this is a abscess formation okay so infection extending that one okay so that is you have to that is will expect the from me too whatever the clinician respect i am expecting that's all okay so the same thing examiner will ask okay case number 7 what is the name of the study you have to familiar with it. what is the name of the study ct angiography something you know you said about non contrast atrial phase venous phase dilated phase everything something is done on particular areas ah uh, triple phase so something you know maybe will expect something you know more than that okay So look at this. Three vessels should be done. Apart from three vessels, something other structure also something here. Okay, that that vessel is that area is actually it is not going. Something you know is fading away. So what type of what type of study this is called? Oh, ah, uh, what is called? Four D. Correct, exactly. It is a four D CT. This is not four D CT. Okay, the four D CT. What is actually this one? What is obviously something is there now? Ah, uh, exactly. This is a parathyroid adenomas. Okay, ectopic parathyroid edema in the superior medial sinus extension. Com uh, confirmation by scintigraphy, uh, nuclear scintigraphy. That is the answer. System will be one of the study will be particularly. We can see that system if scan we can see the update. So they will ask questions like that way. Okay, so the technique related you should be familiar with. Sir, I don't know about the 3D sir, this 4D and all sir. 
you have to be familiar because this is a current update. Okay, okay. that's all. These are things the last aspect. Okay, so ectopic parathyroidism for poor city is very value. What is poor city? Okay, you have to be familiar with. Okay, now case number eight. What is the diagnosis? What is the diagnosis? Okay, or is a typical orontogenic cardiacist. Okay, what is asso association? It's important. What is association? It can be isolated symptom, or it can be the according to W uh, classification. It is it is arising from the dental lamina and locally aggressive and developmental lesions. Okay, because now changed. Previously it is thought differently. This is dental developmental lesions. Okay, so what is the association? You can get basal nevus syndrome or Garland Gott syndrome or maybe Marfan syndrome or known syndromes. These are all can strong associations. Okay, so the strong association only one thing will expect only one you are right. We will give the answer three answer, but you will they will expect basal severe nevus syndrome. This is the most common, more severe um, strong association. Okay, so like that will be asked. Okay, so this simple case. So case number nine. Okay, sometimes this is a two different patients. Two different patients. Okay, there is something a lesion is there. Okay, what is the diagnosis? These two, these are two different patients. It may be a same entity or may be different entity. Okay, so okay, what is the what is the uniformity of this entity and the, what is the underlying abnormality? This is the midline enhancing lesion. That the area is actually that usually the cystic areas and there is some calcification. Okay, so what is the diagnosis? The midline. Okay. So this thing come now. This is a thyroglossal cyst remnant with the rest of papillary thyroglossal mobile intense enhancement. You have to familiar with it, the technique that known features. Okay, once features will be easier. Okay, case number ten. Okay, what is the diagnosis? Because you have to get get, get oriented. Okay, there is abnormality here. Look at the abnormalities. That areas central areas low in T1. Okay, and the bright very extremely bright and the scene. Exactly at the level of the near the sphenopatin foramen level. Okay, and what could be? So this area T2 is not enhancing. Okay, this area is enhancing. This area not enhancing. Okay, in the contrast. So what is it? This is such a maybe not enhancing. That means it's not a pathological process. Okay, maybe that will be no. It is a part of the remnant of the areas. Okay, what is diagnosis? What is the underlying abnormality? It is nothing but see the look at the contrast is not much much of enhancement. So this CT showed there is no. Irregular margin and this look like some like a neoplastic process. Okay, why do see look at the coral image nicely? There is extra arches cells, extra there is extra nematocyst cell with arrested nematocyst. Should not mistake an as a pathological process. So arrested and uh, you know sinus causing there is no the rate in mucus secretion. It is not draining properly. But sir, how do I know? You are familiar with. Okay, you should not make mistake as a tumor. Okay, so this is non-expansion lesion in the osteosclerotic border. You can see the osteosclerotic border here. That means chronic process. Okay, and this is because internal the internal lot of fat is there. You can see the T1 nodule image. There are a lot of fat. The fat is the important clue for making diagnosis. This is not a pathological process. Okay, and curvily in the calcification, the base is painted classically arrested nematization of the skull base. Okay. So difficult, but maybe we are expecting different uh, difficulty level also because okay. So important know, good to know, uh, or must know. Okay, must know. Clarity will be you no know, much more. Yeah, good to know also will be there. Okay. The take home message: Please recognize the normal anatomical variation and complication of the clinical symptoms. Okay. Case number eleven. Come on, quick. So painful swelling. Here there is a lot of you no know, expanding lesion and enhancement. What is the diagnosis? This area. Look at the areas, and there are a lot of air pockets there. Congenital traumatic inflammatory neoplastic vascular. Okay, something you know here. Obviously lesions, and a lot of edema is there. Okay, so okay, uh, correct. It can be, uh, madam already said, it can be, or maybe the enhancement is there peripherally. What is significance and complications? Okay, base may be present with the painful swelling in the submandibular region. Classically, Ludwig angina. Okay, so because it is a life-threatening condition, you have to make a diagnosis. Okay, because it rapidly extends that uh, that inflammatory process in the oral cavity. 
rapid airway compromise okay due to uh, this will be usually cellular focal abscess will be there okay it is caused by cervical infection okay this is 61 years old male with acute febrile illness similar illness what are the three key finding we have asked for three important key findings something they are given actually that apart from head and neck we are going to the so that slightly lower down also something is that yes exactly so this is three compare what are three component there is a phlebitis septic emboli and infections okay so it is a oropharyngeal abscess with the metastatic abscess and septic emboli with the thrombophlebitis igv it is a lemery syndrome okay 13 as a case number 13 okay 40 years old healthy man he is actually in in the, in the front seat in the car met with accident investigated for loss of consciousness suppose you see that this you are doing the scan okay this uh, there is abnormality what is the diagnosis this one anybody you see so i will get the mark only one mark or half mark only i will not get more marks okay you will not get more marks because this is easy okay what is the case infarct okay diffusion restriction infarct when you see the area classical that is not a good mark okay maybe one mark so what is the next you do the your job ah exactly there is no patient have loc and there is no right homonymous semianopia because the site where exactly hospital cot is involved of the radiation involved okay so what is it be you should be now we should angio what there angio where neck angio very good so you have to do t2 acted axial images and as well as neck angio you see the t2 image there is a dissection okay there is a dissection so what you do next there so you can see the intramural hematoma you can see the intramural hematoma then and the, as well as no you can see the angio angio typically you have to exclude a patient having any carotid artery dissection okay typical carotid artery dissection is thing sign classical so this type of question will be respect okay suppose you are in the night duty you are doing infarct sir my dog over sir you should not say because this is a patient having normal homonymous and this is a watershed areas we come across time to know apna your route you know similarly the patient will get immediately you know you have to be you have to be in the front row you have to make a diagnosis if you are not making diagnosis they will laugh at you so that is why they will expect it so man begin the mission is important okay the right cardiac uh, artery dissection with intramural hematoma so we have to see that this is our domain only we have to make entire studies you can say this is our neurology sir this is the head and neck you cannot say because it is a patient is only one okay cardiac dissection okay mechanism injury all of you read that one Mes- message so by utilizing various imaging technique and recognize the not only major finding etiopathogenesis clinical importance relevance therapeutic decision making this is a way questions are asked set okay so look at this slide this slide very important slide if you want you take this photography this slide not other slide <laughs> okay and the complication of critical value finding these are all thing will expect again we expect that. the question will be set by the clinical aspect and technical aspect what is etiopathogenesis that way only we will set okay so case number 14 another 2 minutes sir okay okay so this is swelling this 10 years old child what is diagnosis sorry come on something said yes what a publication what is diagnosis come on tomorrow you all go it right 10 years old child having cheek swelling large lesion what type of lesion congenital traumatic inflammatory neoplastic vascular neoplastic what neoplastic benign malignant metastasis come on ha huh? malignant malignant teratoma armus okay so look at the area look at the uh, no rapid fire sir so look at this you no know, margin expansion lighting lesions okay in a 10 years old okay expand lesion with the rim of cortex the maxilla benign course internal so bubble appearance and hemorrhagic areas okay benign versus malignant this is not malignant nature okay it is a benign lesion it is a simple abc okay so don't worry this question will not ask okay case number 15 the two patients look similar you, now you can you can find you can search in the google you will not get it i'm telling you. so google will not give a diagnosis okay a and b okay what is diagnosis a and b look almost similar but there is subtle finding give a clue for diagnosis okay what is subtle finding 
but you have to familiar with okay look at the areas this is a polypoid lesion and here also polypoid lesions okay and there are some areas where look at the area this the tergo pattern photo there is something abnormal but is here fat strain is preserved that means there is we are dealing with the malignant process okay the focal erosion and soft tissue mass in the the mucosa hard palate and this is the loss of normal fat plane in the tergo pattern photo and this is adenoid cc carcinoma and the, okay adenoid cc carcinoma presenting like almost like a mucosal polyp and other case the other case mucosal polyp on the left side okay the take home point will be you no know, check the soft pap issues sub sub tissues adjacent bone changes erosion hyperacusis or any skull based lesion or what should look for okay quick 16 i have 20 cases quickly i'll go 54 years male what is diagnosis large lytic lesion irregular margin in the skull base in the petros correct so in this side what is diagnosis very bright so it is a eccentric cardoma okay okay last case last case 17 17 18 like i know i have to finish that one. so all the four look similar okay everything looks similar cat dog or some tiger or something is there okay you want to make which is cat which is tiger like that only okay so what similarity okay, everything mucosal mucosal lesion arising from here there is some calcified but this one is not calcified the, the, the typical appearance of enhancement pattern of cribri form this is a typical non enhancing areas much okay intense enhancement okay so different enhancement give a clue for make diagnosis okay so this is the first one is the cavernous uh, um, angiomas typically their calcium laminar calcification inhomogeneous enhancement okay other cavernous angioma oh, inhomogeneous calcification calcification and inhomogeneous enhancement inverted papilloma typical cerebriform enhancement typical cerebriform enhancement antrocolal polyp may be very varying in density because it is going extent may, may not much enhancement the juvenile injury and for and for my intense enhancement okay so with this to recognize the key finding to similar looking condition this is entities okay with this i stop thank you very much